My current resting heart rate is 55 beats per minute. Last night, I got eight hours of sleep, with one and a half of them being in RAM. My stocks are up 1.5%, and I got 250 likes on my recent Instagram post. American society tells me that all these things are so important that I need to have 24-7 access to them right here on my watch. This is what measures success. Numbers I can track and pursue telling me if I'm winning at the game of life. But what if American society was wrong? That it's not about these measurables that we can track and compare to others, but it's about something bigger, something far more simple. That it's about being happy. The World Happiness Report released in 2022 which ranks countries based on things like GDP, social support, and life expectancy, revealed that the United States of America ranked a mere 16th on the list. Countries with less wealth, innovation, and resources dwarfed the US in overall happiness rankings. And interestingly, all of these countries practiced similar things, but most importantly, they all actively pursued happiness. Author and entrepreneur Jim Rom once said, happiness is not by chance, but by choice. We cannot just sit back and let life happen to us. Rather, we need to create a gauge for our well-being and do what we can to move the needle. While this may prove some, including those who have mental illnesses or other physical or, phys physical or mental illnesses, for the majority of us, there are many steps we can take to actively increase our happiness. I have many goals in life, academic goals, sports goals, and goals for my future. But there is one goal that seems to be overshadowed by the rest of them, and that is the goal to be happy. People don't usually think about whether or not their daily actions are affecting their overall well-being. I certainly didn't think of it as a priority until I decided to study the science behind happiness and the strategies of how to imply it into my daily life. It has been shown that being happy can provide many health benefits, including an increase in heart health and reduction in cortisol levels, a stress hormone that is released in the brain and can cause many negative side effects. In addition, the English study of longevity found that people who are happier late in life had a 35% chance of living longer than those who are unhappy. So you may be wondering, how, do we how can I live a happier life? Well, one way is by creating more meaningful social connections. Two psychologists created a study where they split people up into two different groups, people who are happy and people who are unhappy, and measured their social connections and how deep they were. And there was a common theme. The people who were happier had more, deeper social connections, ranging from friends, family, relationships, and more, showing how important it is that we go out and make connections with the people around us, as it could result in us living a happier life. Another way we can increase our happiness is by spending more time outdoors and in nature. The University of Berkeley published an article highlighting how people who spent more time outdoors and in nature were not only happier, but were also more creative and less stressed. For me, I like to spend time outdoors by taking my dog for walks or going surfing. A third way we can increase our happiness is by spending less time on screens. The American Psychology Association created a study that started around the mid-20th century, which measured teen overall well-being. But right around the year 2012, they found that teen well-being began to decrease. They found that teens who spent more time on their phones and social media were less happy and more stressed than their peers who weren't spending as much time. When it comes to pursuing happiness, it takes being proactive rather than reactive. In an effort to see what pursuing happiness looked like in my own life, I decided to create my own personal happiness experiment. I split it up into two different time periods. In the first, I lived out my normal life and went about my usual daily routines. But in the second week, I did everything in my power to actively pursue happiness to the fullest. I even signed up for an online college course through Yale University on the science of happiness, and was even assigned happiness homework, which included practicing acts of kindness and gratitude. In addition to this, I spent a minimum of 30 minutes outside every day, taking, going on hikes or playing basketball in my driveway. One day, I picked up my phone to check the surf forecast, but immediately put it down. I decided to go check the waves in person. When I got there, the waves weren't great, but I decided to paddle out anyway. I had an amazing session, and towards the end, I found myself sitting on my board and looking out at the sunset. And I felt a sense of calmness and gratitude and just being present in this moment. I even went to the happiest place on Earth, Disneyland, although I quickly realized that rides that spin very fast in a circle 
do not make me happy. <laughs> I was with the people I enjoy being around and cherish. And as a result of all this, I found that my screen time decreased 33%. My mood was more upbeat, my energy levels were higher, and my sleep increased in both quality and in duration. And when it came time for the well-being check I had to record at the end of each day, I found that I was scoring higher in all areas. I felt a sense of winning at life rather than merely surviving. We are all the authors of our own life experience. And if we don't actively enrich our lives, then we can waste minutes, days, and even years of this journey that has no simple recipe for happiness. When we pursue happiness, we are feeding ourselves the antidote to an unhealthy, bland life. It's not the good grades, the piles of money, or the likes to your social media posts that truly do the job. So grab a friend, head to the beach, take your sibling to get ice cream, turn off your phone, and watch what happens. It might take some extra time out of your day, or cost a few extra dollars, but you'll find that you're happier than what you were before. How to feel good and be happy is not a mystery. We know what it takes. My journey continues. Join me and start today. Thank you.